as someone who's coaching consultants and freelancers, it's an interesting thing. If I'm coaching someone who has absolutely no experience, which I haven't done in a long time, but if they are just starting fresh, I always say, if you really want to help this person for free, there has to be something in it for them. So they maybe they give you tons. Maybe they give you a video testimonial. Maybe they give you a testimonial that goes on three pages, right? I was working with someone who was coming from a teacher and going into a consultant position and something that was like related, but not a hard, it was like a dotted line related. And he needed those testimonials. He needed something to prove. And he wanted to get practice too, because he was doing Mm -hmm. something he had never done before. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, I said, okay, most of the time, people who want work for free, even if they see your value, don't take it personally and just say they're not for me. There are other people out there for me. And what I advise my students constantly you will hear this the more you're on the online space. There are There's something called an ideal client. And coaches have you list out all their attributes, how much money they're making. Are they female? Are they male? Do they have a family? So you get this like avatar, right? I love that exercise. Don't get me wrong. But what I tell my students is look for an ideal industry that can pay you what you want. All right. So to go back to this website designer client I had, she was like, oh, I really want to work for coaches. I said, what kind of coaches? Me, the solopreneur coach, or an executive coach, or a leadership coach who works with organizations, they're going to pay you higher rates because they're naturally making more money in their business. Mm -hmm. So look for the ideal industry because it's actually, in a way, easier to find this ideal client. Once you find the industry that can pay you the rates, you're going to find your ideal client. There's tons of people in that industry. And you'll find that woman who is in her 40s, who has three kids and makes 150000 a year, whatever it is that you are looking for in the ideal client. So a lot of times that's what I try to teach people when people can't see their value. I'm like, maybe you're targeting the wrong industry specifically. And people get too broad with industry. Just like ideal client, you need to get specific. You could say, oh, but it's in the yoga industry. Okay. But there's so many aspects of the yoga. There's online courses. There are people who run studios. There are gurus and teachers who are social media influencers. Like what part of the yoga industry are you trying to target with your newsletter copywriting skills, right? So what I try to steer them towards is obviously the industry that might be able to pay you more than the little solo yoga instructor who goes to different colleges and teaches one yoga class here and there, right? Very good insight, very good advice. And I would say to anyone who's listening, here's the value of working with Kiri. And Kiri is not giving you the same advice that so many others are giving, like your ideal client. I remember I had one exercise about where does your ideal client congregate? Guess what? The majority of them at that time were men. So they congregate in bars and in hockey arenas. And they say, go there. I said, I'm not going into the, no. their, their locker room to talk about business. Forget that's not me. So there, it's more than that. I will say to people who are listening, you do need to have do the work with someone like Curie to really hone that. It's not just a templated thing that you use to for your ideal client because there's lots of nuances that just won't work for you and you need someone like Curie to work through those. 